a huge cemetery in the middle of Manila, and at the same time one of the most bizarre communities in the world. Because here, 2,000 families cook, sleep and live next to, above and even directly in the graves. Nowhere else are life and death as close together as in this cemetery. But how exactly does one live in the midst of all the dead? That's exactly what reporter Klaus Burmaker wants to find out. You're not serious. For one day, he moves into the cemetery and experiences incredible traditions. Is it a doll or makeup? Our journey takes us to the Philippines, more precisely to the capital Manila. The island state is a country of contrasts, holiday paradise on the one hand, poverty and extreme overpopulation on the other, especially in the capital Manila. Too many people, too little space. The last resort when looking for a place to live, the cemetery. And that is exactly where reporter Klaas Burmiker is on his way to now. I'm going to spend the next 24 hours here. There are actually people who live in the cemetery and I'm going to visit them. I feel a bit queasy at the moment, but here at the entrance everything still looks quite civilized. The notorious North Cemetery is located in the middle of Manila. It has enormous dimensions. 2,000 families are said to live in an area the size of 70 football fields, surrounded by thousands of graves. Unlike in our country, death is not a taboo subject here, which probably has to do with the extreme faith of the Filipinos. 80% are strict Catholics, but their idea of allowing the dead to rest in peace is different from ours. It's like a maze in here, I can't find my way around at all. Soon, Klaas meets his first inhabitants, but he also encounters the dead after a short time. A skull with an old sock on it, I don't believe it. Klaas is on his way to the Feliciano family. They've agreed to take our reporter in. Living space and graveyard merge seamlessly, as is the case with most graveyard dwellers. This is Milagros, Klaas' host mother. For the 47-year-old, the visit from Germany is at least as exotic as it is for her German visitor. This is your kitchen. Yes, here I prepare the meals for the whole family. Right now I'm cooking lunch for my grandchildren. They'll be here soon. You even have electricity here? Yes, we buy the electricity from the cemetery administration. It's very expensive. Costs 2,000 pesos a month. The equivalent of 40 euros. The administration only tolerates the families who work as grave diggers in the cemetery. They don't have to pay rent, but they have to sleep among the dead. This is a family crypt. My ancestors are buried here. Uh, and okay. this is a grave? Yes. Really? In the hallway, we discover three more crypts. And in the living room as well, two people lie buried. This is where you will sleep. I'll just have to let that sink in first. There are no mattresses at the Felicianos, not even for visitor class. The woman lying here has only been dead for two years. Were you already living here when she came? Yes, we started living here ten years ago. Many graves came after that. And why did you move here? My husband is a grave digger. First, we moved to the cemetery wall. That was 27 years ago. Now we live even closer to where he works. By lunchtime, Klaas is already fully integrated into family life. The Felicianos have four children and eight grandchildren. During the day, Milagros takes care of the youngest, today with help from Klaas. It's really nice here, full of life, even though death is right next door. But you kind of forget that after a few minutes. I've only been here two hours, and I actually feel quite comfortable already. The only thing our reporter can't get used to yet is the place where he's supposed to sleep. But his next task is already waiting. We need water. Okay. There is no running water in the cemetery. Twice a day, Milagros therefore has to make a pilgrimage to the water pipe, one kilometre away. 
Do you like living here? It's okay for me. If we could afford it, of course I would like to live somewhere else. But I'm not afraid. In Manila, it's the living you have to be afraid of, not the dead. Mm-hmm. 80 liters cost the equivalent of 4 cents. Life in the cemetery is difficult. Klaas also learns that quickly. Nevertheless, Milagro's everyday life is hardly any different from that of many Filipino women. It's a different story with husband Manuel. In his workshop, the grave digger is already working at full speed because an important funeral is scheduled for tomorrow. Klaus wants to help his host father with the preparations. First we have to move the dead man who's currently in the grave. The lease has expired. We're going to open a grave today? Okay. Okay. Exhumations are an everyday occurrence for Manuel. Right, now it's getting serious. After five years, the lease for this final resting place has expired. The relatives can't afford to renew it. You can't be serious. The body has to be reburied. For the grave diggers, normality. For us, a real taboo subject. I'm speechless right now. Space is scarce in the cemetery too. Tomorrow, a new coffin will already occupy this grave. Manuel, how do you feel about this? Doesn't it bother you at all? I have to earn money and feed my family. I've no other choice. This is my job. Okay. Even though our reporter finds it anything but easy, Klaas finally decides to help out. So now he's picking out the last bones so that the body can be reburied with dignity. Well, with dignity, in a plastic bag. The remains finally end up in a mass grave. Here the grave diggers embed the bag in concrete for the coming decades. What's your attitude to your own death? I'm not afraid of dying, not at all. Death can come. If it's God's will, I'm ready to go. Now things continue a little more harmlessly. While Manuel's sons prepare the grave, Klaas even gets to paint the gravestone for tomorrow's funeral and carries on asking questions. How do the relatives of the dead people feel about you living here? Is that okay for them? Sure, they're happy. Some even pay us money to take care of their relatives' graves. When I imagine someone living on my grandma's grave, I don't think that's cool. Although the rent for a grave is just six euros a year, many bereaved families cannot afford it. That's why the cemetery residents have come up with something unusual to support poor families. Daughter Manilin wants to show Klaus what it's all about. We have to go to the other side of the cemetery wall. The entrance is only open during the day. The bizarreness of what awaits us there is almost unparalleled. Oh God, is that a doll or a corpse? The latter, and things get even stranger. Right next to the coffin, a game's being played. And there seems to be a lot of money at stake. Can you tell me how all this goes together? The boy's family can't afford a funeral. That's why we are playing for money here. The proceeds are for the relatives. The boy died of pneumonia five days ago. Since then, his body has been lying here at 30 degrees in the shade. By tomorrow, they should finally have collected enough money, and then he'll be buried. On the way back to the cemetery, we happen to witness a near disaster. Oh my God, there's a fire in the cemetery. During our film shoot, a hut on the cemetery wall has caught fire. 
The flames are threatening to spread. A short circuit on an electricity cable is the cause. Because of the high electricity prices, many Filipinos illegally tap into power lines. These improvised cables repeatedly trigger devastating fires. This time, they get away with it. That was a master stroke by the residents. They all helped together until the fire brigade arrived, which was able to prevent the fire spreading to the other huts. They've been really lucky this time. In the Feliciano household, on the other hand, there's no sign of all the excitement. Weren't you worried at all? No, because I knew that nothing bad would happen. I prayed to God and God protected us. Perhaps Milagro's faith is also the source of her humility. She's content with what she has, and that is not very much. Two tomatoes and an onion for ten people. How much money do you actually have at your disposal to feed these ten people? I have about 600 pesos a day. With the equivalent of 10 euros, Milagro supports herself, her husband and their eight grandchildren. Even the youngest ones are aware of the kind of place they live in. Which of you has ever seen a ghost? Really? You as well? The ghost came out of the ground from a coffin. Will you tell them at some point that they live in a cemetery and that it's quite unusual? No, they notice soon enough. At the latest, when they get to school and come into contact with children who live in normal flats. In the meantime, it's dark outside. But for Manuel, the working day is far from over. The grave for tomorrow's funeral has to be finished at all costs. There's a new grave where we exhumed a body at noon today, because tomorrow another dead person will arrive who'll be lying here for the next five years. At around 10 p.m. it's bedtime. Klaas is on his way to his very special resting place. No need to be afraid. She can't get out of there. I'm sure she doesn't look like she does in the photo. It's a funny feeling though, there's a dead person under there. I know what you mean. You get used to that feeling, don't you? Sometimes I can still feel the presence of the dead on my skin, and then my hair stands on end. Good night, class. Sleep well. With these words, the Feliciano family barricades themselves into their bedroom tomb. What a day! First an exhumation, which is crazy enough, then a fire, and now I get to sleep on a decomposing corpse. Well, good night. One thing is certain, Klaas will remember this night for a long time. Sleep is out of the question for the time being. I'm lying down now. I can't sleep one and a half meters above this dead woman. Sometime around three in the morning, however, our reporter does actually fall asleep. But just three hours later, the night's rest is over, because in the cemetery community, the day begins at sunrise. I feel like every bone in my body hurts, but I did it. Time to clean my teeth. Good morning. Good morning. Did you sleep well? Quite okay. okay. 70 funerals in one day. That can happen and doesn't upset anyone here. Today there's even one in the Feliciano's front garden. The final preparations are underway. Around noon, the mourners arrive. We keep our distance. The relatives of the deceased do not want us to film. We respect that. Only when the mourners have left can Klaas admire the gravestone he painted. And after 24 hours in the cemetery, the time to say goodbye has arrived. So, goodbye. 
Living with the dead is very strange for us, but the people here have a completely different relationship to their deceased than we do in Germany. And it's true to say that the people living here are much better off than those in Manila slums. I felt very comfortable here.